ZF Expression broadcasting you live on YouTube and this is Forex Trading Course 101 remember we are trying to build a strategy and or a system we are trying to understand how risk management works and the Fibonacci tool is a great risk management tool and we are trying to understand how the psychology works right inside the trading area Remember 90% of traders lose money in the forex market worldwide and the webinars are not trading or investment advice everybody The webinars are just for educational purposes For homeworks, hello George Hello George, George did you, did you watch yesterday's webinar? We found an example where Hello Any, hello Akos We found an example where the C point was not a low or a high but I think today we are going to find also some examples and for homework send or questions you have my gmail contact my skype contact and my linkedin contact that being said let's dive into the live market and what we're going to do today today we are going to talk about the original Fibonacci not yet I'll watch later okay great before we start everybody homework homework until tomorrow homework if you want of course i'm not your father homework find the or find the fibonacci okay find the fibonacci find the latest latest find the latest fibonacci on your currency pairs of choice of choice the currency pairs that you trade find the latest Fibonacci on your currency pairs of choice on the weekly chart chart weekly chart okay remember I have a 20 second delay on the chat also so homework find the latest Fibonacci on your currency pairs of your choice okay and label on your currency pairs of your choice on the weekly chart okay so if you trade euro dollar gbp nzt gbp cat find the latest Fibonacci on euro dollar gbp nzd gbp cat okay what we're going to do today we are going to check all the currency pairs on the monthly chart and we're going to find the original fibonacci in an uptrend what does this mean this means that if this is the if those are the monthly bands right and from the monthly chart the market hit the lower band then we are going to check we're going to find the original Fibonacci in an uptrend okay why the original Fibonacci we have three Fibonacci's which we're going to learn number one is the original Fibonacci then we are going to have the contrarian Fibonacci okay it's not the lesson of today just for you to understand and then we are going to have the Fibonacci of the confirmation or the so-called confirmation Fibonacci okay but for the time being we are just going to focus on the first one which is the original one okay George take a picture of this picture <laughs> take a picture of this picture take a screenshot everybody if this is your first time those are the rules that you need to learn everybody okay take a screenshot take pictures whatever you need to learn this done okay so let's move let's I'm going to delete everything delete this one delete this one delete 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 and we are going to start with the first one right so which one is first AUD what AUD CAD is the first one let's go on AUD CAD monthly chart first AUD CAD monthly chart 
And remember, we are going to we are going to we want to see an uptrend. So this is the monthly chart, and the bias on this currency pair is down. Okay, so we are going to pass this one because the title of today is finding the original Fibonacci in an uptrend so far this market is in a downtrend so AUD cap pass next AUD CHF let's try AUD CHF monthly chart there you go let's see which low is lower lower low okay so this is ADCHF on the monthly chart. We cannot draw any Fibonacci because we don't have the B. We have the A. The A is down here. What is the A? The A is the lowest point, the lowest low. Sometimes is the absolute low. Or is the first low in an uptrend. So this is the A but we cannot draw any Fibonacci because we don't have a high. We don't have the B yet, so AUD CAD pass AUD CHF on the monthly chart. Okay, now your homework, everybody, is to find the Fibonacci on the weekly. Okay, on the weekly chart, you can find the Fibonacci. Okay, but we're going to go on the monthly first. So we don't have a Fibonacci on the monthly, but we do have a Fibonacci on the weekly, which is your homework. Next, AUDJPY, AUDJPY. AUDJPY, it's a pass because the long-term bias is down. We are going to have a down original Fibonacci, so it's a pass. Next. AUD NZD AUD NZD monthly chart okay we have the upper band we have the lower band right AUD NZD monthly chart where is our A? well the A by the rules is the first low sometimes is the absolute low sometimes is the lowest low but it must be a first low in an uptrend so this is the A where is the B? well the B is the first high as soon as possible after the A which is up here agreed? so we have the A is a low we have the B is up in here we are going to take the Fibonacci retracement tool and we are going to connect the B with the A there you go and remember your homework is to draw the Fibonacci retracement tool until you get to the latest Fibonacci sequence okay now George is just an example okay it's just an example I hope we are going to find on these more time frames in some point in time this chart was like this okay so this is an example where what is the C? the C is the lowest point inside the AB boundary not necessarily a low and as you can see when this chart was developing the C was not a low yet Okay, George, you're asking how it's possible that the C is not a low or a high. Sometimes it happens, especially on these smaller time frames. Okay, it's not the best example, but still an example. In the end, what is the C? The C is the lowest point inside the AB boundary before the market hits the appropriate D extension. So our C is down here, right? So A go to B, B goes to C. Let's color code this in what? Orange, transparency, there you go. Okay, now 
where does this stop loss and take profit go everybody this is why the Fibonacci is so useful it doesn't matter this AUD NZD is long bias long term bias is long should go up sooner or later okay and the take profit it doesn't matter if you trade on the 15 minute chart 1 hour chart 4 hour chart daily chart the take profit level is where that the extension right and that the extension is going to be relevant to the C retracement so you don't need to understand the numbers just the colors red goes to red right so this is going to be our take profit yes that was correct red goes to red okay what about the stop loss well the stop loss must go 15 pips below the A the capital A we're going to learn about the ABCD the sub ABCD the sub swings okay so from the monthly chart okay if you enter right now this is the risk and this is the reward up in here it's not the best but still still okay if you want to risk one you are going to go after two so something like this risk reward ratio is this almost 100% a consolidation is Fibonacci applicable yes it is why not why not yes it is George the sequence right okay we we explained to you yesterday everybody Fibonacci doesn't work essentially we said the take profit at the upper band of the consolidation since all levels are areas yes sir yes sir okay so bias is up and if you're going to trade this is called the so-called position trade everybody on the monthly chart why is the stop loss there great question Akos what do you think what do you think great question what do why, what do you think why the stop loss is above or below the A great question I'm going to give you a hand so this is the Fibonacci DC how are you so this is the Fibonacci right the first Fibonacci and then hit the D extension and retraces again right this is the second Fibonacci okay retraces and extends again right why 15 pips oh you're talking about why it there is no right or wrong of course it's not it's not a rule you can have a 20 pip stop uh, 100 pip stop but the important thing is for you to understand why the stop loss goes above or below the A why because if the market is going to reverse and is going to retrace and is going to retrace okay if it goes to zero across the Fibonacci is still valid sometimes it's going to touch okay it must not break the zero the black it, but sometimes it's going to touch and it's going to go back so the if it touches the zero then the take profit the D extension is 100 okay this is why it's a few pips above or below but if it breaks then the Fibonacci is not valid anymore if the stop loss is hit then there is no uptrend and the whole Fibonacci structure is not valid so we exit the trade yes sir yes sir 
that was a support sometimes yes sometimes no okay remember the homework everybody this is you should find the Fibonacci on the AUDCHF weekly chart the Fibonacci in an uptrend you're welcome no problem please ask questions everybody okay AUDCHF homework AUDNZD homework next AUDJPY best AUDUSD right AUDUSD monthly chart So AUDCAT is a pass, it's a down Fibonacci, AUDCHF we don't have the B on the monthly, AUDJPY it's a pass, we have a down Fibonacci, AUDNZD we have found one, AUDUSD monthly chart it's a pass because again we have the two, oh not this one, we have the two bands, so it's a pass. For the time being we have AUDCHF on the weekly as a homework, AUDNZD as a homework. Next, Canada CHF, everybody. Canada CHF, okay. Now this is an example everybody where Fibonacci don't work, okay. Fibonacci is in here, they don't work. Not from the monthly, not from the weekly, okay, not even from the daily. Maybe they work on the one hour chart, maybe they work on the on the two hour chart, but remember when the market hits the upper band you need to reverse your Fibonacci on the smaller scale. But the Fibonacci's they don't work in here on the monthly chart, on the weekly chart, not even on the daily chart. Okay, so don't bother with Fibonacci's in here. This is the sideways movement, sideways channel. Okay, so it's a pass. Next. Canada JPY We have the upper band, we have the lower band, right? Now Everybody where would you start your Fibonacci? Where would you start your A? We have a few lows so would you start drawing your Fibonacci at low number one, at the low number two, at the low number three, or at the low number four? Which one? Where would you start your Fibonacci? So this is A number one. If you want, we can call this is going to be the A number two. Where would you start your Fibonacci in an uptrend? This is going to be A number 3, right? And we have A number 4 clone, A number 4. Where would you start your Fibonacci? And it says number 3, Aqua says number 1. Right? George, DC, Miguel, where would you start your Fibonacci in an uptrend? On the A number 1, A number 2, A number 3. Hello Victor, it says A1. Sorry, 3 is wrong. George says 3. Number 1, number 1. Yes, correct everybody. Number one is the correct answer. Why is that? What is the A? The A is the starting point. A1, correct DC. Congratulations. The A is the starting point of an uptrend. Sometimes is the absolute low. Sometimes is the lowest low. Right? For the weekly three or four. 
we are on the monthly Miguel so the correct answer is a number one because this is the starting point of the uptrend everybody hello Aske how are you okay everybody who thought well num a number three a number four no the starting point of the uptrend is in here yes sometimes it's going to be the absolute low sometimes it's going to be the lowest low but always it must be a starting point of the uptrend why is that because when we go on the smaller time frames if we don't remember the rules we are going to have challenges finding the right a so if this is the a where is the b the b is the first high as soon as possible after the a so the first high is up in here right this is the circle I'm going to delete the circle so a to b right now I'm going to delete the horizontal line I'm going to delete the circle and I'm going to draw the horizontal lines on my Fibonacci to help myself like this and transparency so horizontal line on my A horizontal line on my B I'm going to take the Fibonacci retracement tool and I'm going to spread from B to the A right where is the C everybody is the number one the C down here where is the C is the number two down here the correct C is number three maybe the correct C one two three three up in here which one is the C everybody number one number two number three A2 might break A1 yes this is why it's important everybody that you start in the correct place and it says number one is the correct C what is the C? the C is the lowest point inside the AB boundary not necessarily a low before the market hits the appropriate extension Ako says one, yes sir, George says one, yes sir Miguel says one, okay where is the appropriate the extension, which color? is the red, the blue, the green? which one is the correct? color, so A to B, B to C and let's color code this in orange something like this, transparency A to B, B to C, right? 5 Nava says 1, hello blue, yes correct, yes sir, so A, B, C D, right, there you go, D is the blue so the projected the extension is at the blue right so this is the D extension level now because the market by the if you're going to follow the rules everybody the D must be a high in an uptrend so the market hit our D extension in here but the D extension it's going to be up here yeah no problem because the D must be a high so A to B, B to C C to D up in here ok so the first Fibonacci sequence is completed when red is not hit it's blue, yes B should be higher why should the B be higher? what is the B? the B is the first high as soon as possible 
5 nawaf okay the B is the first high as soon as possible after the A okay it shouldn't be higher no sir this is the first high this is the A down here the first high as soon as possible is here okay so we have completed the first Fibonacci sequence what we're going to do we are going to adjust our Fibonacci with the horizontal line A goes to C I'm going to move my A goes to C and again horizontal line slowly B goes to D B goes up here right now if you want you can leave the old Fibonacci or you can delete it no problem I'm going to yesterday I was deleting my Fibonacci today I'm going to leave it on the chart so this is the new Fibonacci sequence okay and again where is the C? the C is down in here right? A to B, B to C and orange there you go so long term Canada JPY is up long term bias is up where we are going to enter the market when the market breaks this counter trend line we are going to jump into a trade buying going long on Canada JPY on the monthly chart, weekly chart, daily chart, 1 hour, 2 hour, 15 minutes, whatever but now B is earlier 5 candles after A George, the rules of the Fibonacci they apply when you start drawing the Fibonacci, ok? then the sequence is going to change and you need to adjust your Fibonacci ok, George? the first Fibonacci, good question, the first Fibonacci when you start drawing it, the A is the lowest low is the starting point in an uptrend and the B is the first high as soon as possible but then the ABCD sequence is going to change because our D extension is it depends on the C retracement ok great so when the when and if right if the mark is going to break our counter trend line our take profit is going to be the red and our risk is going to be 15 pips below the A nothing difficult, nothing special, right? A, B, C, D red is the 14% yes sir, 14% level goes to 118 yes sir okay so this is the Fibonacci on the monthly chart your homework everybody until tomorrow you need to find the Fibonacci on the AUD CAGF weekly chart you need to find the Fibonacci on AUD NZD weekly chart and now you need to find the weekly Fibonacci on Canada JPY weekly chart this is the homework until tomorrow find the latest Fibonacci on your currency pairs currency pairs of your choice on the weekly chart ok so AOD is over, Canada JPY, what's next? file open, let me see what's next not this one let's see AOD, we are over, Canada CHF, CHF, JPY, CHF, JPY, CHF, CHF, JPY. 
everybody why yes one more thing why why you should have the if you're going to use the Fibonacci why you should have the monthly and the weekly some of you are writing in the other chat oh but I'm trading on the 15 minute chart lesson number one the higher time frame controls price movement and market direction on the smaller time frame this is why you should have the and you are going to understand this best when you are going to learn about the contrarian Fibonacci there is a way to confirm the C is going to increase your profitability by 80% if you are going to learn and use the Fibonacci in the right manner in the right way okay passion I'm trading on the 15 minute chart so I don't need the monthly yes you do yes you do how do you know the bias and the long term direction this is basic stuff everybody you should have learned this already the higher time frame controls the smaller time frame of course in between can do, can do anything it wants when it wants right like on AOD and ZD long term bias is up but the meantime is going up and down and up and sideways and make a lower low now I'm making higher highs again right in the meantime the market can do anything it wants but this doesn't change a thing that long term bias is up why <laughs> why is that well because we are at position band number one number two we have an up Fibonacci which was not broken and number three you can draw an up trend line if you want those are the why's great question why is a great question everybody why is the long term bias up number one we are at the lower band on the monthly number two we have an up Fibonacci which was not broken and number three you have the long term up trend line what is a trend line? a trend line is a tool that confirms the overall general trend Aqua saying four times higher time frame is enough one hour two hour enough to trade Aquas enough to trade or what do you mean is enough it's enough to trade or enough to analyze enough to confirm okay so homework ADCHF weekly chart AUD NZD weekly chart Canada JPY weekly chart CHF JPY it's a pass why is that because the market touched the upper band and the long-term bias is down for the trend yes and no ACOS it's enough for the short-term trend but it's not enough for the structure yes and no my friend it's enough to confirm the short-term trend yes but it's not enough to confirm this structure so you need to be careful there CHFJPY it's a pass next Euro Euro AOD first Euro AOD let's address the Euros Euro AOD upper band lower band so this is the lower band transparency 40% there you go and up in here this is the upper band okay now this is a no-brainer it's it's easy right to find the A it's easy to find the A so homework for you we have one more you need to find the latest ABCD on Euro ALD weekly chart Forex forecast hello boss I believe it's you, MHB. Just, just you are calling me, boss. 
Is this you? MHB? Hello boss, boss you're GBP too. Not today. We're going to check one, but I believe it's down. But yes, we're going to check your GBP too. Okay. So let's draw the horizontal lines. Black transparency like this. Okay. Now, where is the A? Well, this is a no brainer. A is in here. Is the lowest low, it's the absolute low, but it must be a starting point of the uptrend. A. Great. Where is the B? Where is the B? Is the number one the B, everybody? Is the number one the B or is the number two the B? Which one is the B, number one or number two? What is the A? The A is the starting point in an uptrend. Sometimes it's going to be the absolute low. It's me, MHB. Yes, sir. Thanks, boss. You recognize me. <laughs> it's easy to recognize you, believe So, which one is the B? Number one, number two. What is the B? The B is the first high as soon as possible. Yes, sir. Number one. As soon as possible is the keyword. Okay? George, we come to the example where the C is not a low, finally. So A to B, Fibonacci retracement tool, we are going to spread the Fibonacci. So you can see, right? A, B. Which one? Let's go into transparency. There you go. Which one is the C, everybody? Is the number one the C or is number two the C? Which one is the C? Number three. <laughs> There is no number three in this example. Which one is the C, everybody? Number two. Five now says number two. Ask says number two. What is the C? What is the C, everybody? Where is the... There you go. What is the C? George says number one. Any number one, Aquas number two. Take a screenshot, you need to learn this. The C is the lowest point, lowest point, not necessarily a low between the A and the B, starting from the B on before the market hits the appropriate D extension. Okay? So which one is the lowest point? Is number one the lowest point or is number two the lowest point inside the AB boundary after the B? Which one is the lowest point? The C is not necessarily a low. Yes, next to B they can even be in the same candle. Yes, Miguel, you are correct. So the number one is the correct answer everybody and as you can see it's not a low. You don't have two candles on the left and two or you what am I? Let me see. Sorry, it is a low George. I was thinking it's not, but is a low still. Still a low. Okay. In the end, it's the lowest point inside the AB boundary. I thought it was not a low, but it is a low. You have two candles on the left and two candles on the right. And of course, the appropriate extension goes to green, goes to green, right? So, 
one more time a to b b to c c to the d it passed the green it passed the 1618 extension but i understand now okay great and it formed a high up in here so this is our d there you go what we're going to do we're going to move horizontal line a goes to c b goes up to the d okay now i'm going to i'm going to leave the first fibonacci on the chart so a goes to c and c is going to be somewhere in here and b goes up to the d okay we're going to take the Fibonacci retracement tool and we're going to draw it again on the chart A, B, C, D I'm going to compress the chart a little bit compress the chart ok now which one is the C everybody? is the first circle the C? is the second circle the C? is the third circle the C or maybe is the fourth circle which one is the correct C and again what is the C the C is the lowest point not necessarily a low but it's the lowest point inside but when can I enter you can enter when you have the risk reward in a great place and after a counter trendline break with a bullish candlestick formation ACO says number 4 so it's here and it says number 4 5 now off is just theory ok because this is the monthly chart you would enter in here you would enter in here this is where you would enter now it is difficult where do we enter after one at green or do we wait too long until we see the D but we then no no great question George we don't we don't wait for the D because the D is a projection okay so if this is the example everybody thank you for the questions if this is the example it happens all the time okay it happens on all time frames all currency pairs so this is the example we don't know the future okay strategy we will draw our trend line counter trend line and we would wait and wait right and wait and we would enter in here just an example we would enter in here okay five now off and everybody else you are you are thinking and asking well where should we enter this is where we would enter why is that because we have a counter trendline break we have a bullish candlestick formation what is position trade exactly we are going to have a lesson on this okay I need uh, 20 minutes to explain to you what is a position trade not today okay five now off okay so those are the indication that the trade is going to go up now risk reward right green goes to green so this is going to be my reward and if I'm going to put my stop loss above the A or below the A in this example below the A I'm going to risk more than I'm making now as we talked already what can we do well we can lower our risk moving our stop loss to this to the C to the retracement right we are going to improve our I didn't set correctly it's not that we are going to improve our 
stop loss but we're going to improve our risk reward okay but there is a rule if you put your stop loss inside the AB boundary you are increasing the chances of being stopped out by 80% there is a statistic out there in, on the internet with the Fibonacci rules and trading okay so this is an entry and the market of course went sideways right maybe we would be stopped out it depends on the stop loss see everybody why the best place to put the stop when we talk the, about the Fibonacci is above or below the A not above and or below the C okay and still here is another entry okay counter trend line break bullish candlestick formations and risk reward measured by the Fibonacci retracement and extensions okay and the third one would be here so those are examples where and how do we enter okay nonetheless we have the a b c let's check so the d extension is at one point six eight zero and this candle is at 1.67 so the market didn't hit the d extension everybody okay the market didn't hit our d extension not yet we are just a few pips above far away so it's better to not enter after the first retracement there is no rule George there, there, there is no rule about this but what I can tell you and what I can confirm you shallow entries have bad risk reward ratio both the entry will be very long term this is just an example it happens it's it's what we are trying to teach you everybody is how to think is the same on the one hour chart 15 minute chart 2 hour chart is exactly the same adding to hello and the reward will have to be much higher yes making the trade much longer term potentially yes okay a b c d so a goes to b b goes to c and c goes up in here to the d now what's the problem for the beginner trader is this one the market can do anything it wants so the market can fall and retrace inside the AB boundary the market can break all the other Fibonacci's the Fibonacci on the weekly chart the Fibonacci on the daily chart the Fibonacci on the one hour two hour chart but it's still an up Fibonacci on the monthly chart that's why you should have the Fibonacci's on all time frames why is that because the higher time frame controls price movement and market direction on the smaller time frames and this is why we learned in the lesson number one number two and number three the market way extension retracement extension so homework until tomorrow find the latest Fibonacci on AUDCHF weekly chart find the latest Fibonacci sequence on AUD NZD weekly chart is going to be different than the monthly and tomorrow we are going to check together find the latest ABCD swing the latest Fibonacci on the Canada JPY weekly chart is going to be different from the monthly CHF JPY it's a pass Euro AUD monthly chart so this is the Fibonacci okay we are still in an up swing in an up Fibonacci swing on Euro AUD monthly chart 
okay but in the meantime the market can do anything it wants can go down can go up can go sideways especially on the monthly chart in this example do we leave the take profit where it is and move the stop loss at break even or do we risk a loss after we miss the take profit for just a few pips there is no right or wrong George it's up to you it's up to the trader to decide how and when is going to manage the trade okay but one of the first rules don't let a winner turn a loser and we learned about cancel and replace also so you have a variety of decisions to make George I mean you have a variety of yes you have different things that you can do okay there is no right or wrong Passion, should we take the profit because we missed for a few pips? I don't know, it's up to you. Passion, can we put our stop loss to break even? I don't know, it's up to you. Passion, what is best, to cancel and replace or to close the trade? I don't know, it's up to you. There is no right or wrong in this sense. You can ask 10 different professional traders they are going to manage the trade in 10 different ways ok George there is no an easy answer to this passion what would you do I but this is my style I cancel and replace ok now if the market is going to take me out I'm still going to end in profit but the trader who closed is going to make more profit than me <laughs> what would you yes I have another another platform that I'm streaming so you cannot see every question but somebody asked already what would you do my style okay and it, there is no right or wrong my style is cancel and replace this chart is too choppy for me great great observation when in doubt stay out if you don't understand the chart if you don't understand the currency pair if you are not comfortable trading the chart go into another chart okay let's see we have three more minutes euro cad euro cad let's see euro cad euro cad monthly chart I don't know if we are going to finish but again where is the A again it's a no-brainer it's an easy one where is the A well the A is the starting point sometimes it's going to be the lowest low sometimes it's going to be the absolute low but it must be a starting point of the uptrend so this is our A where is the B the B is the first high as soon as possible after the A so this is our B right where is the C the C is the lowest point inside the AB boundary not necessarily a low right before the market hits the appropriate extension so this is our C down here and where is the D? The D is relevant to the C and it must be a high. So green goes to green, A, B, C, D. Up in here, right? A, B, C, D, Fibonacci tracing tool, and we are going to move. A goes to C and B goes to D, right? and as you can see everybody A to B, B to C red goes to red C to D we have another sequence yeah I'm going a little bit swifter because Rakesh is coming on stage and we have one more minute and the D up in here is a high so we have another Fibonacci and this is going to be the last one A goes to C 
B goes to D. There you go. Okay, everybody. Homework. Find the latest Fibonacci on your currency pairs. The currency pairs of your choice on the weekly chart. Okay, until tomorrow, stay strong and trade with passion. This is FX Passion signing off.